So to create the circular piece in the center of the medallion, I'm first going to cut out the circle from this template that I have made in Photoshop. And then I'm going to use this one as a template on top of the protective plastic film on the acrylic sheet that I have here. And at first you are going to notice that I have actually traced out five circles, but later I noticed that I only needed three circles for this project. Then I'm going to cut out these pieces using this plastic cutter, which is sort of similar to a glass cutter where you create a groove in the acrylic and then you are going to use some pliers to make the acrylic snap in the areas where you have added the groove. And I was a little bit worried about this part because I had only seen tutorials on how to use this on straight details, but I have never seen this on corners or rounded edges or rounded details. So I decided to try this one on one of the corners in one of the circles to see if it would work. And it worked with no issue at all. I just added a groove using the plastic cutter and then used some pliers to see if it would snap in the areas where I had added the groove. And since this worked perfectly, I knew that this was going to work. But to make it easier for myself, I decided to first cut out these circles to make them turn into squares instead of being this large sheet of acrylic here. And when that was done, I only needed to cut out the corners using the plastic cutter and some pliers. And to make sure that you're protecting yourself, because even though this is not glass, it's plastic, it still can get some sharper edges on the areas where you had these corners. Also, when the plastic starts to snap, there are some flyaways from the plastic, so it would be good if you had some kind of protective eyewear and some gloves when you're doing this. So to smoothen the edges with the acrylic pieces, I'm going to tape down some 80 grit sandpaper and then later some 180 grit sandpaper. And I also tape the three pieces of acrylic together so I know that they are sanded down flush to each other so they are not uneven when it comes to the measurements. So to create this sort of distorted iridescent glass look, I'm going to first add a thin coat of Mod Podge to create a textured surface. Since I'm going to use acrylic paint that is going to be diluted with some Mod Podge, I want to make sure that the paint has a textured surface for the paint to grip onto. Then when the Mod Podge layer had dried, I mixed in some of this cobalt blue paint with the Mod Podge to get a transparent blue tint on the acrylic. But later I decided to mix in some of the purple with the blue since the paint looked too blue compared to my reference picture. And I added this mixture in a spotty random texture with a sponge applicator to create some variations of tones in the glass. I also wanted to enhance more that kind of iridescent look, so I wanted to try out some of this Aurora nail art powder that I had. This one had an iridescent shine that went from sea green to purple depending on which angle the light sources came from. And I did this when the Mod Podge was a little bit tacky so I could easily buff in the powder on the surface of the acrylic. And since I love the way the effect look, I did the same thing on the other side of the middle piece, but this time I only used purple acrylic paint first and then buffed in some of this iridescent powder.
Then it was time to start working on the outer circles on the medallion and these ones only had one side covered with paint and they were going to be having this overpowering turquoise sea green shade to them but still in a transparent finish. So I did the same technique of adding Mod Podge mixed in with some of this viridian green and some of the cobalt blue to create sort of a turquoise shade and I added this in a layering process until I was happy with the overall look and shade of the turquoise layer. And since I couldn't resist, I added some of this Aurora pigment to these layers also, just to enhance more of that iridescent, mystical, magical look to the medallion. Then to seal everything in place, I added a thin coat of Mod Podge yet again. And then when the Mod Podge was a little bit tacky, I pressed all of these layers of acrylic together to work as a glue and create the look of a thicker piece of glass. And here you can see what the iridescent effect looks like in different angles and different kind of light sources. So you can see the depth and the different shades and variations of tones it gets depending on where the light hits the medallion. To create the circular iron piece that goes around the glass piece that I had created, I first laid down the template and then added a piece of glass on top of it so I would have a transparent surface on top of the template so I could have it as a guide when I start working with the clay. And to make sure that the circle stays perfectly flush to the acrylic piece, I first wrapped the acrylic piece with some of this cling film and then taped it down so it was perfectly centered on the template. And then it was time to start using the clay. And the clay that I'm using here is this stone textured modeling clay by Das. And I just used the template underneath as a guide, but if I was a little bit unsure, then I would just look at some of the reference pictures so I would get a better idea of the overall look of this piece of iron. Then looking at some of the reference pictures I could see that the circular iron piece that goes around the glass piece is actually only supposed to be two thirds of the thickness as the actual glass piece. So this was an easy fix, I just cut out one third of the thickness using a utility knife and then I just smoothen and even out the surface with a little bit of water using some of the modeling tools. Then to create these sort of hooks or eyelets or whatever they are called, there's going to be for those tiny ropes or cords you're going to attach later. I'm first going to create this sort of pyramid or prism shaped piece of clay and then I'm going to cut out the top piece of that one so it would have a straight surface. And then I just started to add it to the areas that I could see in the template and the reference pictures and then just started to blend it in using some of the modeling tools, some of the brushes and a little bit of water until all of the pieces were blended in together. And then to create these rectangular holes, I just used this flat screw bit that I had and just pressed it into these pieces that I had recently added to the circular piece and then started to widen it and smoothing out the surface using a brush and some other modeling tools. Then when it comes to the Los Illuminados symbol, I'm going to do the exact same steps that I did on the circular piece around the glass piece of the medallion. But this time I'm going to have to be a little bit more 
accurate when it comes to the details because it's supposed to be a symmetrical look where it's supposed to look the same on the left and the right side of this piece. But since it's supposed to look like a rustic old piece of iron, I wanted it to look like the piece wasn't perfectly welded or grinded, so I wasn't really that bothered if it was looking a little bit rough in some areas, but still tried to make sure that it was very close to the details that I had on the template and the reference pictures. And I first did this in a thinner layer just to get the basic shape down. And then when the layer started to dry a bit, I went over with another layer of clay just to thicken up the piece so it looks like it was closer to the thickness that I could see in the reference pictures. Then when I was happy with the overall designs, I made sure that the pieces of clay would dry overnight or at least until they were dry enough so they wouldn't be soft and had gotten a hardened surface so I could easily remove them from the piece of glass. And to remove them from this piece of glass, I just used this putty shovel that I had so it would get underneath the surface of the clay to easily remove them without damaging the design that I had created. The last pieces that I'm going to create using this modeling clay are these, I don't know what really they're called, but they're pretty much like mounts or attachments. There's going to be, for example, for the chains and then this decorative fringe part that is in the lower part of the medallion. And these ones I just played around with having some circular pieces as guide for different circumferences of circles. And then I just played around with details that I could see in the reference picture and also it's hard to know exactly what the pieces look like without these ropes or cords added to them so I figured that it would be easier if I just had some of these circular holes added so I could easily just pull some of these cords or ropes through these holes and create the effect that I can see in the reference pictures. And these details vary from picture to picture. In some pictures they look one way and other pictures they look another way. So I think they are a little bit unique in the design. So I just created some designs here. There was a combination of different pictures that I saw and created something that could work for this medallion. And also for the hook part for the chains that I'm going to add later, I just used two of these tiny tacks that I had just to have a base for when I'm going to attach the clay so the clay had something to grip onto and doesn't fall apart or starts to fall down when it starts to dry. I just wanted to have something that would keep the clay straight up so I could have this look of that hook effect.
The circular piece actually broke off when I was going to remove it because it was a little bit too thin in one area. But this actually was a good thing because I actually had to sand down a little bit more on the piece of glass because it's supposed to have a rounded edge on the top piece. It's not supposed to have a straight edge. So what I did is I just like I did before, take down a piece of 80 grit sandpaper and added some masking tape on the areas of the medallion that I wanted to protect from from any scratches or anything like that and then I just sanded down this edge of the medallion until I got that kind of rounded shape that I could see in the reference pictures. And I could also see that the circular piece of clay that I added had shrunken a bit so to make sure that the measurements around the glass piece and the piece of iron would fit. I started to sand down the piece of acrylic until the measurements around the circumference on the glass piece and the circular clay piece would fit each other perfectly. Then to permanently attach the iron piece around the acrylic piece, I just added a thin layer of contact glue all around the edge of the acrylic piece and then I just pressed the circular clay piece in place and left it to dry. To prep all of these pieces of clay before I'm going to start adding any paint, I'm going to just go over a little bit with these files just to sand down all the edges to get a nicer looking finish. Then to add a protective surface on top of the clay pieces so they do not absorb any paint or moisture when it's time to start working on the rustic iron effect on the surface, I first went over with a thin coat of Mod Podge. And when that one had dried, I went over with this acrylic lacquer that is going to dry in more of a hardened surface. And then to create this rustic iron effect, I'm first going to add a thin coat of black acrylic paint. And when that layer had dried, I started to buff in some of this graphite powder. It looks very close to dark or deeper iron or more closer to gun metal, but it was going to be perfect as a base coat for the other layers that I'm going to add. And then I actually started to use some of this silver acrylic paint that I had, but it still wasn't really a necessary step to take now because I was going to have to recreate this effect later when I had added all the other layers. Then it was time to start creating this kind of antique rust effect. So what I'm first going to do is making the surface having this kind of textured grainy surface to it. So I first stipple on some of this black chalk paint that is going to dry in a matte finish. And then I went over with some of this warm chocolate chalk paint. And then it was time to start building up the shades of rust. So I started to add in random placements, looking at the reference pictures and using some of this burnt umber acrylic paint that has a brownish red tint to it. And then to add more of the look of some dusty rust on the surface, I went over with some of these pressed soft bezels that I had. And these ones were added when the acrylic paint was still a bit tacky, so the soft bezels had something to grip onto and stay in place. Then I went over with this silver acrylic paint yet again, just to bring back some of those metallic effects and making it look like some scratches to bring back and enhance the look that this piece is made of metal. And I did this a little bit back and forth until I was happy with the look and the design of this rustic piece of iron. And I did the exact same steps for the other pieces of clay. Uh... 
For the assembly of the medallion, I'm going to use these two thicknesses of macrame thread. But they are obviously too clean, so I'm going to age them a bit with some coffee and some black dye to get the dirty beige tint to them. First I'm going to use a thinner thread to attach the Los Illuminados symbol to the medallion. Now first adding the threads on the upper part of the symbol. To make sure that I have an even attachment before I'm going to make a knot, I'm going to temporarily hold the thread in place with some clamps. Once I was happy with the placement, I added a simple knot and trimmed off the excess thread but left around an inch to create a simple fringe. Then I did a similar thing with the lower part of the symbol but used a longer thread so I could wrap it around with six loops and then attach it with a knot. And that's all for the medallion part, and the next step is attaching the mounts. So for the lower detail I'm going to use the thicker macrame thread, and this one is going to create a fringe effect with some longer threads hanging down around 7 inches long. So I'm going to use 3 15 inches long threads and overlap them through the 6 holes in the lower part of this piece. They overlap in sort of a diagonal cross pattern through the two pillars. And to get more of that kind of fringe look, I'm going to use this slicker brush and brush it on the ends of the threads. To attach this piece to the Los Illuminados symbol, I'm going to pull a piece of the thicker thread through one of the holes on the upper part of the lower detail, add a knot, and then loop the thread around the arrow point of the symbol, and then pull the thread through the other hole and finish it off with a knot. Then I trim it down and use the slicker brush to get more of a fringe effect. For the upper part, I'm first going to attach this chain that I have painted in the same rustic style as the clay pieces and attach it to the loop part. Then I'm going to use the thinner thread from earlier and attach it with a knot through one of the holes, then pull it through the upper loop of the symbol and finally put it through the other hole and finish it off with a knot. And that's it! That's how you make your own blue medallion from Resident Evil 4 Remake.